Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to test the new FreeSky Zip9 long range antenna for the R9M long range module and I'm also going to compare it with the FreeSky Super 8 antenna that usually comes with the R9M module. First of all, let me explain you how I want to test the FreeSky Zip9 antenna and how I want to compare it with the FreeSky Super 8. For testing the FreeSky antennas, I'm using my 5 inch quad with the FreeSky R9M mini receiver and the FreeSky D pole T antenna at the back. I'm also using my FreeSky Tyrannus X9D Plus 2019 with the R9M 2019 long range module. In order to get a significant result, I'm planning on doing two similar flights over 2 km with a pretty low altitude. I'm also setting the output power of my R9M 2019 to the lowest output power level of only 10 mW. And by the way, I have also updated my Tyrannus to the newest version of OpenTX. And of course, I have also updated my R9M 2019 module to the latest Access firmware, as well as my R9 mini receiver. The next thing I want to make clear is that I'm broadcasting the RSSI telemetry value back to my flight controller in order to show you exactly the same RSSI value in my on-screen display. First I'm going to do a test flight with a new FreeSky Zip9 antenna followed by the Super 8. But before we are going to start flying, just a small information about these antennas. The FreeSky Zip9 is a directional antenna that is also known as a Moxon antenna and it's made for flying in front of you, so it's probably better for flying long distances. Whereas the Super 8 is a Dipole T antenna, the default one that comes with the R9M. It's made for flying everywhere around you, so it's probably the better all-round antenna. But now we are out on the field and I'm ready for my first test flight. First, I'm going to test the FreeSky Zip9 antenna that is already installed on my R9M module. My test quad is loaded with a 1500 mAh 4S battery and the Runcam 5 Orange. You can see the RSSI value in the OSD overlay. Keep in mind that I'm using the lowest output power of only 10 mW. Well, that looks pretty good, we have a very solid RSSI value and I could probably fly further away. But now we are reaching 2 km and I'm preparing to turn around. Keep an eye on the RSSI value. 
Now on the turn we had a short RSSI drop but my quad was controllable all the time and I didn't get a fail safe. I even got a RSSI critical warning from my Tyrannus. And now on the way back we get a pretty solid RSSI value again, even now with a receiver antenna at the back of my quad. Next, we are doing the same test flight with a FreeSky Super 8 antenna. We can see that the RSSI is a bit lower as it was on the flight before with the ZIP9 antenna. And now we have some RSSI drops on the flight around that hunter's hiding place. Now the RSSI is getting way worse and it's definitely not as solid as it was with a ZIP9 antenna. Here on the turn at around 2 km we are getting a short failsafe. Fortunately the GPS rescue mode is saving me from losing my quad. It even happens a several times that my receiver is losing the signal. Let me try to explain what's going on here. When I'm flying away from me, the receiver antenna of my quad is facing to the transmitter antenna, but on the turn the receiver antenna is getting blocked by the quadcopter frame, the battery and the camera. And at this moment the RSSI drops. That's why I'm using two receivers redundant on my long range quad, with one vertical antenna at the back and one horizontal antenna at the front. So let's fly this quad home and at the end I'm showing you both flights in a split screen, that you can get the chance to compare the RSSI values side by side. Thank you for watching, see you next time and if you like tell me your thoughts about my test results in the comments below.